Hello, family. I am claiming y'all as family because I have been tracking the amazing work that The Way has been up to for many, many years. Um, me and my family has been blessed by the work that y'all do uh, in community, on social media, um, really moving and embodying uh, the faith that you all have. So I am grateful to be with y'all today. I wanna say a special thank you to my new best friend, um, Pastor Tanisha. So thank you for the invitation to come and share a word with this amazing community. Today, I want to invite us to revisit a familiar passage of scripture, to revisit Psalm 23 with the hope that we can reimagine rest. I know for me in this season of so much uncertainty and with distance church and Zoom church and feelings of isolation, I am finding that holding on to things that feel familiar, revisiting things that feel familiar are helping me to notice God and to stay grounded in my faith. And so I wanna start by just inviting you to listen to listen as I read this very familiar psalm in different translations, in different ways. I want to invite you to notice what you hear, what you feel, the ways that God might be showing up and speaking to you. So I'm starting with the classic, the one that I'm sure many of us memorized as children. We're going to be going straight to the King James Version. And it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now I'm going to go to a more contemporary translation, looking at the message and invite you again to listen to the ways that God might be speaking to you in these words. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I am not afraid when you walk at my side. Your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. My cup brims with blessing. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. And another translation, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. As you listened to those different translations, did you find that you felt a little uncomfortable with words that felt 
unfamiliar? Were you surprised by the things that you noticed in the different language? Did you find that maybe you felt a deeper connection with way, the way that some of the images were explained? No matter what translation, the Psalm 23 is inviting us to know that God is with us and to trust God with us. No matter which translation we read, we heard the gift of rest as lying down and taking a nap. We heard rest as comfort and trust. And then towards the end, we hear rest as nourishment. I'm going to read um, this scripture one more time with a slightly different translation. And this is the one that's going to guide my reflection today as we think about rest as nourishment. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. He makes us lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside still waters. He restores our souls. He leads us in right paths for his namesake. Even though we walk through the darkest valley, we will fear no evil, for they are with us. Their rod and their staff, they comfort us. She prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. She anoints our heads with oil and our cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord our whole lives long. I want to specifically focus on verse 5. She prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. As Black folks, we know the healing and restorative power of a meal. We know the meditative practice of washing greens in the sink, of stirring a roux for gravy or for gumbo, of kneading and cutting biscuits, of adding Lowry's little garlic powder, little pepper by feel and smell and sight and trusting that the taste will be there. We know the celebration that comes when we finally get our peach cobbler to taste like our mamas or our aunties or our grandmamas. We know the joy that comes with family laughing and joking and doing that little moan and dance when the mac and cheese hits just right. We know the feeling of love when someone welcomes us in tells us to sit down while they make us a plate to eat now and another plate to take home. We know the power that can happen through the food that we eat and share. But in our lives that are full of busyness and meetings and things to do, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I find that I am too busy to eat. And that sounds ridiculous. Sometimes I am so busy throughout the day that I forget to eat, to do the things that will nourish my body so that I can keep going. Or if I'm good, I'm looking for something that I can grab quickly and eat while I'm doing. Instead of doing the pause, sitting with a meal and recognizing that it's not just meant to nourish my body it's not just energy to keep going but the food the meal the fellowship is meant to nourish my body to nourish our bodies as well and so what would happen if rather than pushing through the day, forgetting to eat, grabbing something quickly, but we instead, like in this psalm, intentionally sought out the table and a meal as a place where we could find rest. Let's look again at the beginning of verse number five. 
And in the final um, version that I offered, I said, she prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. And I find that sometimes, especially when I'm praying familiar things, adding she language opens up another way of understanding who God can be and who God is. And it's easier for me to recognize God's nourishing power when I connect it to the love and the care and the healing that has come for me when a woman has set a table for me. And if we're honest, we know that it's usually the women who are preparing the tables and preparing the meals. I'm not saying that our brothers can't throw down, but what I am saying it is, is sometimes that woman's love language of food and hospitality that is a balm to our soul. And when we think about this table, this table that God is setting for us in the midst of trouble, in the midst of a hard time, after we've gone through the valley of the shadow of death, this is a very special table. If you look at the word in Hebrew, it says that it is the king's table or it's the table that is meant for a sacred ceremony. Does that sound familiar? The ways that when we come to take communion, we go to the king's table and we partake of the sacrament of the body and the blood of Christ and we find rest for our souls. From the Old to the New Testament, the Bible names the power of the table as the place where we can encounter God. And as the psalmist names this table that's prepared, they name the rest that is available in the ever-present invitation to sit at the table of the Most High God. Can you feel that invitation? Maybe you'd be able to hear it a little bit better in the invitation that says, baby, you look tired. Sit down and let me make you something to eat. Can you feel the excitement of being invited to the king's banquet, knowing that what you will eat will be good? All organic or farm to table or the best cuts of meat or exactly the way that home tastes like. Can you settle at the table in the promise that there is enough, enough food, enough space, enough time that everyone will be able to eat as much as they want. We're too busy to eat lunch, but the psalmist reminds us that the table and the invitation is always available. It's not something we have to sneak away to because she prepares the table in the presence of our enemies, in the presence, in front of, in clear sight. And I almost can imagine in my mind a table being set in the middle of a battle, lush and full of fruits and vegetables and meals and desserts and clean, fresh, cold water and lemonade and iced tea while the battle rages on. Sometimes we do need to remove ourselves from some situations to get the rest that we need. But other times we can rest right where we are knowing that the Lord is with us. And I love uh, this particular image, like I said, of the table in the middle of a battle zone. And if that is not a display of God's power, I don't know what is. Because there are times when God will fight our battles and will bring about the heavenly host to be at our back. But sometimes God shows her power with a table. 
And when we sit at God's table, it is a public declaration of who we are and whose we are. When we sit at God's table, we can rest in the trust that God will protect us from anyone and anything that is trying to hurt us. When we sit at God's table, we know that we will be nourished and cared for so that when we step back into the battle, we will be stronger and ready to face what lies ahead. That is the power of the table that is set in the presence of our enemies. And that's a different kind of rest that we have access to. Did you notice the other change that I offered um, to this familiar scripture? I changed all of the singulars to the plural. And sometimes we do need to feel God so intimately and say, I know that you are laying me down. I know that you are close with me. But what happens with the way that we understand ourselves, the way that we understand God, the way that we understand community, when we name that instead of preparing a table just for me, that God prepares a table for us that our nourishment comes from the meal and from the community that we eat with. I love that when we look at the life of Jesus, he was constantly getting in trouble for who he was willing to eat with with tax collectors, with sex workers, with people who had been pushed out and shunned. And in that simple table fellowship, Jesus challenged the societal norms as to who was in and who was out, who was deserving of a good meal and who was not, who was invited to the party and who was not. And Jesus, in his presence, offered the transformation that can come when we sit down for table fellowship. And as I was thinking about this passage and thinking about us and the table for us, I had this moment to think about if us includes the enemies that have been coming against us. That instead of leaving them and those people to look on with hunger and with jealousy while we eat our fill, what if when God sets the table, our enemies are invited to? And God says to us and to our enemies, to all of God's beloved, that there is enough. And that God does not desire for us to be fighting over the scraps. God says there is enough food and there is enough space. And here at this table, you can lay things down. You can rest in the abundance of God's blessing and love and your heart can be changed and relationships can be formed and people who used to be your enemies then become your family. Because God is willing to say all to all of us, I am your shepherd. And because I love you, you don't have to want for anything. Let us find rest at the table with the Lord, with our family, with our friends, and even with our enemies. Jesus says, come to me all who are weary and I will give you rest. And then Jesus tells Peter, if you love me, you will feed my sheep. And then ultimately, the gift that Jesus offers us again at the table is when Jesus says, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. To nourish your bodies, 
and your souls and your community. Let us rest in the invitation to God's table. Let us rest in the nourishment of our bodies and our souls. Let us rest in healing fellowship and the abundance of God. Let us rest in the promise that surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Family, would you pray with me as we finish this time? Most holy God, we are hungry and we are tired. Would you help us to say yes to your invitation to sit down and would you help us to say yes to stopping in the midst of all of the things we're trying to figure out and do and get accomplished and to simply be with you to receive the abundant gifts that you want to offer us god would you remind us that there is room at your table and would you help us to find the chairs and to scooch over and to make the space so that all of your family, all of our family can rest and heal and love and be loved and walk away satisfied. And we pray this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.